Today we're gonna take a look at the most important news of this month, ranging from new software updates, game development updates, rendering software news and VFX breakdowns. Starting with some Blender news, the Blender Institute's team has outlined some areas that they will be focusing on in their future workshops meetings. The team is trying to set their goals on four main areas – application templates, overrides, physics, and texturing. They are now trying to make application templates much easier to create because, as it stands right now, you have to go through a process of manipulating the startup file folder to create a template. Hopefully with this update, you will be able to create all templates right within the Blender interface. The library override system is getting some love too. Back when it was first introduced, it could only override a limit number of properties, but since then and with the 3.0 release, the new system exposed some long-standing problems, particularly the resync performance as it seems to be caused by complexity bottleneck. This version will hopefully address all these issues, finish the development process and assess the future of the override pipeline. Geometry nodes is a hot topic lately, especially since the release of Blender 3.0. The possibilities and the things you can create using geometry nodes are mind-blowing. You can automate so many functions using the node-based editor, but now the team is looking at the possibility of incorporating the physics dynamics within the geometry nodes pipeline. This will allow for an easier and interactive physics simulations, but the first hurdle that faces the team is finding a solver that can work in real time. This will completely replace the old simulation system and maybe even the way we think about physics simulations. Now, does this mean that all the physics simulations will be done using nodes? We don't know yet. All we can do is wait and see what the devs are gonna come up with. Another area that the team would like to focus on is texturing. Although it made a lot of improvement, Blender is still lacking functionalities in this area. A lot of people right now are using different external software for texturing. But maybe the combination of node-based textures and mask painting will help Blender move towards a better non-destructive texturing pipeline. In another Blender news, Reillusion joined the Blender Development Fund family, coming on board as a Silver Corporate member. It is known for its extensive suite of character and animation tools, such as iClone and Character Creator, with Reillusion announcing plans to improve the interoperability between its toolset and Blender, an effort that already started in 2021 with the introduction of the Blender Character Pipeline. Now we're gonna jump to some game development news. Michael Nelfer's senior environment artist at 343 Industries, who was the workflow lead for the terrain and environment toolset development for Halo Infinite. He released on his art station a behind-the-scenes showcase of the tools they used to help the team create Halo's infinite stunning world environment. The goal was to create what you see is what you get data-driven terrain editing workflow for landscapes with support for multiple simulation users, sculpting, procedural ground cover generation, material painting and more," wrote Nelfers. I also supported the terrain artist setting up terrains, working on the graph setup, debugging and optimizing graphs and terrains to run at performance. Using the terrain tools and the workflow they created, the team can preview all changes on the fly, so node connections, parameters, materials and ground cover can be manipulated and modified instantly. Also, the spline row system is non-destructive and can be edited and manipulated in real time. This draws similarities to the workflow Far Cry 5 teams used back in 2018, as game studios nowadays opt for a procedurally generated world instead of traditional hand-painted one because it allows for greater level of modularity and control. And around the same topic, Microsoft acquired Activision Blizzard, the publisher of Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, and Diablo, for $95 per share and an all-cash transaction valued at a whopping $68.7 billion. After the transaction closes, Microsoft will be the world's third-largest gaming company by revenue, just after Tencent and Sony. Just last year, Microsoft closed a $7.5 billion ZeniMax acquisition, which is the parent company of video game publisher Bethesda. The studio holds a lot of household franchises such as Fallout, The Elder Scrolls games, Doom, and much more. 
The planned acquisition will include all the iconic titles and franchises from Activision Blizzard and King Studios like the aforementioned Warcraft, Diablo and Call of Duty, but also Overwatch, Candy Crush, in addition to global esports activities through Major League Gaming. The company also has studios all around the world with more than 10,000 employees. Bobby Kotick will continue serving as CEO for Activision Blizzard, but once the deal closes, Activision Blizzard business will report to Phil Spencer, the CEO of Microsoft Gaming. It is also important to note that last year was one of the worst years for Activision Blizzard PR-wise, as the company was subject to many articles and lawsuits, generally about bad work environment, sexual harassment allegations, and crunch culture. Since the pandemic started and with the mandatory social distancing, gaming has been a refuge for so many people. Last year was the year of video game spending skyrocketed to new heights, especially in the US through the second quarter of last year. According to a new report published recently, consumers spent a whopping $60.4 billion on video games just in 2021, which is up 8% from 2020. While the majority of spending last year was on content, reaching $10.2 billion on physical, digital, and subscription-based sales, gaming hardware also saw big growth last year with PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch all growing by minimum of 46% each. Now in new software releases and updates, I want to let you know about Plask, which is a new and free browser-based AI-powered 3D animation editor, in addition to being a motion capture tool as well. It allows you to easily capture animations from any video, simply record your video on your own webcam and the AI will capture the motion for you. If you are looking for an easy motion capture application, you can try Plask for free. Just head to the Plask.ai website. The browser-based editor also has a retargeting system to adjust your rig and a timeline to edit your animations. All good news must come to an end. And today's bad news is that Maxon finally dropped the hammer because Pixelogic ended the free upgrades for perpetual ZBrush license holders. They have updated their licensing page recently to reflect the changes to perpetual licensing offers. Before this update, ZBrush users enjoyed free upgrades irrespective of when they bought their license. However, some changes were expected to be made after the acquisition of Pixelogic by Maxon in the fourth quarter of last year. Perpetual licenses purchased after December 29, 2021 can only receive critical bug fixes updates, and features upgrades will require the purchase of an upgraded license, but the frequency and the pricing are yet to be announced. Also, the interactive data visualization Speed Tree 9 was released, bringing exciting new features such as a mesh converter, a new Speed Tree generator that converts photogrammetry scans into procedural models. Speed Tree is one of the best and most used software in the industry to create trees, plants, foliage, and vegetation. It has been used by so many games and movie studios because it has two versions a game development version and a VFX version. Also for Maya users, Autodesk released a video as part of their series that dives into working with ACES. This video outlined and explained how and why you want to use ACES color management system in Maya instead of the old color management system. ACES or the Academy Color Encoding System is the standard for managing colors in many industry applications. It allows for a wider range of colors to be represented on the screen. In the real world, there is an infinite number of colors, but on your screen, you can only show a limited number of them. That's why developers came up with a color system to map a real-world value into computer-generated images. And now we're gonna jump to some rendering news. You probably have heard of Chaos Player, formerly known as PD Player. This new Chaos Player was released this month and it allows you to play back ultra-high definition image sequences because it is aimed for 3D artists, animators, and supervisors who want to review their work quickly. The player even supports multi-channel EXR renders. 
Some of its major features include floating point composition, real-time playback of high dynamic range image sequences, AB wipes to compare up to four versions of the same shot in real time. Also, Kyos Player supports OpenColor AO version 2, one of the most used color management solutions. Also this month, mark the margin of two industry giants, Kyos and Inkscape. This newly combined company will retain the name of Kyos, and its aim is to strengthen their product lineup and to create a complete visualization ecosystem to meet all the needs of their end users. However, all products from both companies will continue to operate and be available under their respective name, including Inkscape, V-Ray and Corona. Just if you are wondering also, the CEO and the co-founder of Kyos and the CEO of Inkscape will share the title of co-CEO for the new company. The last couple of weeks also marked the release of Epic Games' award-winning Twinmotion 2022.1, the real-time 3D visualization software. This public preview of Twinmotion is free for download, and you can do that from the Epic Games website. The new features from this release include a path tracer rendering engine to improve the graphical fidelity, and you can now switch between the path tracer and real-time rendering in the viewport. There are also updates to global illumination, physically correct reflections, super sampled anti-aliasing, and much more, in addition to built-in high dynamic range sky domes that can be used to increase realism, especially in conjunction with the past tracer rendering. You can also now harness the power of AI with NVIDIA Canva 1.1, the new version of Canva that dropped its beta version this month. It includes an AI model with higher definition, more quality, and considerably fewer artifacts. Also, the ability to output four times high resolution images. On top of that, there is now five new materials, straw, mud, bush, dirt, and flowers. Canva uses an AI-powered model to turn simple paint strokes into real-world materials, like grass or clouds. And as the industry is moving closer and closer to fully AI-automated processes, it is hard not to notice how mind-blowing the AI can craft a real-world environment from seemingly simple lines. Version 2.6 of Flux Core Render has been released as well and with it comes a lot of exciting features. If you want to read about the new features and the release catalog, you can follow the GitHub release note. Some of the most notable features are the OpenColor IO2 support, in addition to optimizing the parsing of mesh light sources, also by the way, it is now much faster. In some bad news for Moto users, Kyos announced through their post on their forum the discontinuation of VRA for Moto. The end of sales and maintenance date was December 20th of last year, with the plan of phasing out VRA for Moto gradually throughout 2022. To ensure smooth transition, Kyos will offer support for Moto until December 21st, 2022. After this date, VRA for Moto will no longer receive technical support and new builds will no longer be available for download. And although you are free to continue using the product after the end of support, the problem reported will not be taken into consideration by the Kyos team. Industrial Light and Magic Studio released on their YouTube channel three new videos from their long-running series Behind the Magic where they break down their most iconic VFX shots that they worked on, and this month was no different. They released two videos of Marvel's One Division, one for Loki, and the other one for Netflix's Red Notice movie. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.